Hello, everyone, and thanks to Sarah. I guess we are all now amazing Figma plugin builders. Yeah, anyway, um, thanks for coming to this session. I'm Li Chin, and yeah, let's try it. OK, it works. OK, today I'll sharing my plugin journey with you. But first, let me tell, tell you a little bit about how I got started. I'm originally from Taiwan and now live in London, working at Intercom as a web engineer. Over the year, I've attended several design conferences, quite obvious, host Friends of Figma Taiwan, and build close relationships with designers. I still remember this one time I host a meetup, the photo on the button center, with a round table session. The funny part was there were no tables or chairs, so we all sat on the floor in a circle sharing ideas. But it was one of the most memorable sessions I've ever been part of. This experience inspired me to learn more about the creation process of designers, which then led me to build Figma plugins to improve their workflow. You may have used this plugin, Gibby Sticker, before, where you can add animated Gibby assets into a fiction brainstorming session. Or this one, Simple Flow, which helps you build flowchart with powerful connectors. So yes, no more opening a new fiction file just to do the copy and paste work. Yeah. So this is a brief intro about myself. I've been building plugins for more than four years. And today, I'm going to share two behind the scenes story. First one, curve text. Curve text allows you to bend text into different shapes, such as full circle or full half circles. After getting a result, you can further add the color or the font style. You can even customize your own path, so draw whatever you want on the Figma canvas and bind the text on top of it opening up even more possibility for visual work. The idea of curve text actually came from a hobby project I, I worked on. In that project, I have to deal with SVG elements and pass calculations. I was then inspired to think, what if I could bind the text to a pass and then control it? Well, to do that, we can simply define a text element and set its edge reference attribute to the actual pass element's ID. We can then adjust the sizing, offset, and even the spacing between letters. It's really interesting to see how the text changes. Now, we need to transform all these text elements from the SVG world into a Figma canvas. So unfortunately, directing, copy, and pasting these SVG elements won't work in this case because it's too complicated for Figma to handle by itself. So I know many of you may have played with text paths before, but we all end up with the same questions. So how can we actually get the positioning and sizing of every character? Well, it turned out it's much easier than I thought. There's a native HTML API called Get Position of Char, which allows you to get each individual character's positions. So for example, if we pass the index 0, which indicates the first element, we can get the starting position and the ending position of that character H. With these two points, it's clear now we can get the width and height with simple math and an extra calculation to get a rotation value. So let's look at the whole process. You can see no matter how we update the result, I can always draw these colorful boxes surrounding all each characters, indicate the information we need. And the final step is just loop through all this information. We can create a character in Figma with its API one by one and set the positioning and sizing that it needs. And that's the core logic of Curve Text Plugin. So sometimes you don't need to overthink about how to craft Figma plugins. A simple solution can work perfectly and be just what needed to solve a problem. So yeah, I hope you liked the first one. I will share the second one with you. Thanks. So the second project I want to share today is Cutout. So Cutout allows you to remove background or isolate object from an image in a few seconds. So unlike other background removal plugins or what Figma announced today, you can specify the exact object you want to cut out, like choosing whether to pick up the dog on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. The inspiration for cutout began last year, May, when Meta launched a segment-anything model. 
I wanted to host a server myself to use this new AI model. However, the cost of hosting a cloud server that runs AI is really expensive. It's also very difficult to ask user to pay by the amount of usage, making it almost impossible to move forward. Then I saw this AI demo from a company called Hugging Face, like the emoji. They provide a platform for a developer to share models, code, data set, and AI experience. In one of their demos, they showcase a serverless AI application using Transformer.js. Transformer.js Transformer is designed to be functional equivalent to its Python library. This means you can run the same pre-trained LLM model or diffusion model all on the web using similar API. Here is an example that shows how to easily import the model and the processor. We can provide the processor with the input image and any point on top of this image, and it will pass through the model. From there, we'll get a mask as a result. So this is really simple, right? With just around 10 lines of code, we have the foundation to run the entire AI in the browser. By using this framework, we can avoid the high cost of hosting a cloud server. But since we are doing all this heavy calculation on the client side, there's a chance that the browser might get stuck for a while or enter this page unresponsive status, which is requiring us to reopen the Figma again. So here, I'd like to introduce this web worker with some cute doodling. Yeah. This is a way to run the script entirely in the background thread. So I'll give a basic example here. We can create a main file and a worker file. We can send the image from the main thread to the worker thread. So I will send a five to the worker. The worker will then multiply the number by two and send back the result to the main thread. So in this case, we get 10. Web workers are really useful for even ex more expensive tasks. In this case, we ask the worker to perform a task that lasts for five seconds. Normally, if we execute a script in the main thread, the whole web applic application will freeze up for five seconds. However, since we shift the task to a web worker, our main thread will work properly as usual. Now, let's just try to pull the whole segmentation task from the main thread into the worker thread. This way, our entire Figma application will now freeze up, and everything will run smoothly. So this is a demo. I'll turn Figma into offline. Normally, we don't do that, but this is just to showcase that the entire task is done on the client side. Yeah. So using Transformer JS can re reduce uh, the cost a lot, since there's no need for a server. It also provides more privacy, because users' data isn't sending to the server anyway. And just one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Transformers main developer, Zenova, shows us that we can run the entire process using web GPU instead of a CPU. So we can really see the difference in this benchmark chart. Given the same amount of tasks on my laptop, the process could be more than 10 times faster with web GPU. In fact, on some machines, the speed can be more than 100 times faster with web GPU, and that's really impressive. Yeah. So today, my color plugin is already running the model on WebGPU. It's five times faster compared to before. And I believe the quality will improve as the, as the model matures. Yeah. We still need to wait for the previous one. Yeah, so it's very quick now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so there's a huge potential in client-side AI waiting for us to explore. And this approach reduces the server costs enhance privacy, and also increase e efficiency. What does this new technology mean to you as a builder? And how do you imagine product will look like in the future? I will leave this question for you to think about. A lot of time, I'm just having fun uh, and experimenting with my ideas to create plugins. I hope this has inspired you to start build your own. If you are new to the Figma plugins world, it's always best to start with Figma official YouTube channel and their documentation. There's also a plugin called Figlet, which you can learn from other people's code snippets. And don't forget to check out Yuan Chen's GitHub project, Create Figma Plugins. It has been commonly used to set up the foundation for new projects. If you'd like to dive into AI worlds, I highly recommend visiting the play playground on Hugging Face website. Also, watch the talk from this year's Google I.O. There's a full series showcasing the future of client-side AI. Personally, I'm very excited about what's next for web development and products. Lastly, try out the plugin on Figma plug communities. Feel the good part? 
the detail that delights you, and think about how to build something related. I believe once you are in this loop, you'll naturally create something unique. Yeah, so that wraps up my sharing for today. A big thanks, thank you to everyone who spent time with me.